Hello everyone. You're probably wondering, what the heck was that? I thought I was getting an Edge 8. Well, turns out I did. And as a matter of fact, here it is. So it finally came after uh, several months. So let me explain. I ordered the Edge 8 back in January and month went by and nothing. So I decided to order the camera, an ASI 294 MC Pro. And that's attached to this thing right here. And I ordered that because I wanted to spread the money out, you know. You know, who knows when the edge was coming. So I decided to order the Hyperstar, again, to spread the money out. I was going to get this, but not for another six months to a year later, but, you know, still nothing. So then I decided, geez, I got, the cam I got this camera, this uh, 294, and I have my Canon 200 uh, millimeter uh, lens. So, hey, why don't I try to connect it up? And I had several different options to get an adapter. I was planning on doing this eventually at some point anyways. Canon or ASI or ZWO had a their first generation connector adapter, but that didn't get two good reviews. I guess it was a hunk of junk from what I understand. But anyways, they came out with a, another version, a second version, which was much better. In the meantime, there's this other company called Astro Mechanics outside of uh, Russia or uh, in Russia, and uh, they actually had uh, a mechanical adapter which connects up to the computer and you can so you, you can use the automatic focuser on the Canon lens. So I was really thinking on doing that. It's a little bit pricey, but still I was like, gonna do that. But then I decided to go with this thing. This is a, a third generation, I guess, ZWO. It's a Canon adapter, but it also has a two inch filter to go along with it. So I thought this is a really good compromise. I, I love this thing. And I can use my moon and sky glow filter with it that I've had for years. And I can have my IDAS NBZ filter uh, hook up with this. This filter I purchased specifically for the Celestron to use with Hyperstar, because this thing can be used with Hyperstar as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to doing that. So as you can see, I'm fully loaded now, so I'm going to have a lot of videos coming out pretty soon. I'm Kurt Zapatello, and you're watching Astro Quest 1. Okay, look at this thing. Don't, don't you love it? It looks really awesome, I think. It really sits pretty well on this, on this ADM dovetail, I've got the dovetail ring, I've got this, the ZWO ring to hold it, so I've got to connect up together and I've got the ZWO mini guide scope and the ASI 120 guide camera, which I have on my other permanent setup in the shed. So I, re I really love this thing. So I'm going to connect it up to my Atlas Pro, although it's a little overkill. But I'm actually trying to run through all the kinks right now with this thing because I plan to use my Celestron Edge with the Atlas Pro as well. So I want to get it, everything's all set. I've already, I've got a new computer too. So I, I'm, I'm starting fresh. So I've loaded my favorite programs on here. APT, Nina, SharpCap, Backyard EOS, and all the um, programs that, that support those and ASTP plate solver and PS2 plate solver. I have all those things installed on here. And I also have PhD2, of course. Okay, well, how does everything work? Well, everything works really well like it should. However, I hate that word, however. There's always a however. I, I have two issues, or maybe one issue, maybe all connected into one. And it's with guiding. Now, PHD2 will guide perfectly if I just have that on alone. But when I connect it up through Nina or APT, it wigs out. It, me it says it times out, it can't download the image. Now, I know that's a common problem because sometimes it grabs the imaging camera rather than the guiding camera. But I think I've fixed that. Now, there's another issue, and this is where I'm saying it might be the same issue. This new computer, I don't know how or why or what, somehow Microsoft OneDrive was on here or whatever this OneDrive thing is. And it's some, I think it's some online drive that works like Google, but whatever. It's on, it was on here and I think I deleted it. Hopefully I deleted the whole thing. 
but it sort of took over. It, what happened is I was downloading images and, it, and it's automatically trying to upload it to this OneDrive thing, which is a online thing. And I don't remember ever signing up for this thing, so I'm kind of PO'd about it. But at any rate, I uninstalled it and I haven't had time to check it out again. And if it's ever clear again, I'm gonna try to test it out. I did manage to do some imaging with it over three nights. I imaged NGC 7023, which is the Iris Nebula. And the first night when I was imaging, I had the gain setting set at zero. I, I thought it would do its unity gain, its default gain, which is 120. Uh, but uh, that didn't, so I screwed that up the first night. The second night, fixed everything. Everything was working perfectly except the guiding issue. I was taking 90 second exposures and that didn't really need to be guided anyhow. So I've got, I, I got like an hour and a half that night. And as I said, the stars were really round, so I didn't really need guiding. And then the third night, the questionable seeing conditions, but I, I did manage to get some usable or I think usable. So we'll see what kind of image I get with this. Now I am gonna have to get this guiding thing fixed because I, I like I said, I plan to use it for the, uh, uh, this edge eight and the edge eight, you're gonna, you, it's, it's gotta be guided, the guiding's gotta be good for that. But anyways, let me show you on the computer what I'm talking about. And maybe I'll show you a couple images uh, using the, the camera. I'll see what, see what I get with that. Okay, well, welcome. And let me show you what I can do with this thing. So I'll put it on sharp cap, because sharp cap, it's, it's daytime, so sharp cap's actually pretty good at imaging during the daytime. Okay, and now let me focus in on something that, uh, that I can get to. So I'm using uh, ASCOM here. So let me just uh, scroll this down. Okay, let me put the sharp cap back on. Okay. There we go. And it's still a little bit bright. There we go. Okay, and let me just focus it in a little bit. Okay, going a little bit lower. That's the roof of my astronomy shed. And there we go. Let me see if I can focus in on that. Okay, well, not bad, I think. Ooh, there's a little ant crawling on it. And that's about uh, probably 50 feet away, too. So, so a pretty impressive camera. So let me open up the programs that I'm going to use to do my deep sky imaging with. I'll, I'm going to close this out. Okay, I'll demonstrate it with Nina right now because this is the one that uh, I was having, well, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second. So I load the profile, connect up the camera, so the camera connects okay and everything like that. So does the telescope. Everything's fine, I'll minimize that. That's all I really need with this thing. And if I, pre well, if I press guiding, the auto guider, that, that'll work. It'll seem to work anyways. Okay. So everything's fine with that. It says it's all connected. Oh, that's, that's already started. So that worked. But what the problem I was having was when it was taking images, it would somehow stop. It, I would get this downloading error. And as I said, I thought it was the cameras but I made sure they were uh, selected the, on the, the right one the guider was selected the guiding camera but um, let me show you something else if I go into options if you look over here this is what I'm talking about that one drive that one drive was actually appearing in here too but I was able to delete it if I delete it from here watch what happens that's okay oh no it works huh Oh no, see here it is. This thing pops up, so it's, and if I close everything out and re-upload it again, it's going to have that OneDrive thing in there. Now I already uninstalled OneDrive, so I don't know. I'm, I have, like I said, I gotta wait till it clears up to see if this thing interferes with that. Okay, that's it for now. Well, first off, folks, let me apologize for this video if you've made it this far. It's not my usual video where I do a lot of uh, tutorial stuff. This is more like a rant, I guess. But uh, anyways, I leave you with my final image, my, or my, the image that I took with it was the Iris Nebula, NGC 7023. 
I was satisfied with it. I, it came out okay. The neb I, got, I did get some nebulosity. I only shot it for, uh, was it 2.6 hours or so? There wasn't a lot of time on it. I had a lot of difficulties trying to get this thing to work and as you can imagine. But I wasn't totally happy with the stars and I had the aperture set at 3.5. I think I'm gonna uh, do another image with this uh, setup and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna change the f-stop to f4 to see if I can get the stars a little bit better, uh, better shape. Anyways, I promise my next video is going to be more of a tutorial and fortunately I'll have a lot of stuff to talk about with getting this new edge and everything else. So stay tuned. We'll see you later.